Okay, so good morning everyone. So although na maliit lang tayo, pakitawag na lang yung mga classmates nyo na hindi walang face-to-face -face classes. So we will be starting our lesson and I will be recording this one for everyone to see after this lesson para may balikan kayo for your last na part of your summative na test. So, this is a call. Ang ilasan natin ngayon is the first na part ng ating i-cover for the summative test. And by next week, that will be the last na part for your summative test for this quarter. Bago magsara ang uh, quarter two, then you will have your semestral break if meron siyang uh, semestral break, which is probably one to two weeks ng February, which is first or second week of February. So mag-resume ang classes probably second or third week of February na naman. Okay? So yan siya ang i-cover natin. Then, uh, we will be starting your third quarter up to fourth quarter by after your semestral break if i tutuloy siya ni DepEd. All right? So you will be having a lesson regarding your modules, modules 5 and 6 today. So kung ano yung kakayanin ng ating oras today, so yun ang ating i-cover for this lesson. So we will be having um uh a lesson on cellular respiration, then a part of aerobic respiration kasi medyo mahaba yung sa glycolysis. So probably we will be ending up to glycolysis or probably Krebs ngayon. So hindi muna natin i-cover. And the rest which is my electron transport chain pad after. So he, that's for next week na muna. Okay, so this is for, uh, we have uh, I played the video kanina, which is about um, oxidative, uh, oxidative and substrate level phosphorylation. So, merong copy niyan sa uh, inyong uh, yung Google Classroom ninyo na link, Google Drive na link for quarter two modules for this uh, school year. So, yun siya, pwede ninyo siyang i-access from there. So that's a, one of the videos that you will have to watch because um, it will encapsulate everything na nasa isang module, which is module 3 ng inyong mga set of modules natin. So yun siya, i, ano, isang lesson na yun siya na nandun sa isa video. So that's one of the videos that you have to watch for as part of your lesson, especially if nahihirapan kayo mag-intindi sa inyong mga lessons sa inyong modules. Alright? So, let's start with, uh, let's go to your um, lesson, which is part of your module 5. So, if you have your module 5 with you, kindly um, open them to the first page. Okay? So, let's have the first page, which is on cellular respiration. So, nasa cellular respiration tayo class. And you will be having um, an activity for this one. For those who will be attending face-to-face -face classes, uh, mamayang hapon, kindly magdala kayo ng inyong uh, clothes pins. That's one of the requirements for this activity. And a graphing paper. If walang graphing paper, you can bring your ruler or your any na pang linya ninyo para sa inyong mga papel para na may i-graph kayo later sa activity natin. So, yun siya ang ilalason, uh, lesson for today. So, this is actually a part of your um, a part of your module 5 pero before that, you will have to understand first how ATP is actually created. So, meron tayong different na mga processes how uh, ATP is actually created. So we have two of them, which is substrate level and oxidative, oxidative um, uh, phosphorylation. So meron tayong dalawa. So for 
creation of the energy like ATP may ano may different tayo na processes kung saan siya dadaan for cellular respiration and cellular respiration only happens in your mitochondrion so mitochondrion is a singular term mitochondria kapag marami sila okay so yan siya ang inyong tatandaan for that so ATP is actually created through your um open systems natin na uh, na type of um yung parang may meron tayong exchange of either matter of energy within with the surroundings natin so that's part of your open system na uh, type of exchange of matter and energy para ma-create yung ATP natin so unlike other types of systems like isolated or closed na systems ang cellular respiration is actually open because it needs energy from the outside and it needs it's the one that it generates actually is also uh, recycled back into the system. So kaya siya very efficient ang cellular respiration. Kaya siya kaya gumawa ng up to 38 to 40 ATPs depending on the pathway na metabolic pathways that it goes through. So that is part of our lesson later. Okay, so energy is actually class nagagawa sila through this way. So meron tayong endergonic and exergonic na processes. So kapag sinabi mong um, endergonic na process, you say that um, energy is needed para makasupply ng another form of energy. So most of our energy na processes are actually uh, meron tayong endergonic. Kaya nga tayo steady yung supply dapat ng ating ATP. Meron din tayong processes that we will have exergonic na types of reactions. So meron tayo yung uh, mas marami, meron siyang, ano, meron siyang gagamiting energy, na i, merong isusupply, pero meron din siyang i-re-release na energy. So there are times like that. And that's the time that the cell is capable of creating ATP. So this forms kasi, ito siya, makagawa siya ng ATP, yes, but it's one that it's used to create more ATP. So yan siya makikita ninyo mamaya sa ating uh, glycolysis. So glycolysis kasi has two uh, types of chemical reactions. Meron siyang endergonic, meron siyang exergonic. So, mamaya makikita ninyo. So, commonly then, uh, during um, paggawa ng ATP class, we have this one which is the activation energy. So, kaya tayo merong enzymes. So, you will be knowing all the enzymes mamaya and makikita ninyo yan sa inyong modules which is on modules 5 and 6 uh, which is 6 pala. Sa so 6 ninyo, you will see your tables meron kayong tables dyan which is it will show you the enzymes that are actually used for glycolysis so glycolysis actually re requires enzymes kasi kailangan niyang madaliin lahat ng processes niya so kung without those enzymes class it will really require a lot of energy mas marami pa sa dalawang ATP per reaction sa first part of your glycolysis. But with your enzyme, nagagawa ng glycolysis na tipirin, gama, uh, maliit lang na amount of energy is required for the uh, creation of more energy. Kaya nga nakakaroon, nagkakaroon siya ng net na ATP of at least 4 ATPs see glycolysis because of the enzyme. So without the enzymes, wala siyang nabibigay na energy. Walang nagagawang energy for glycolysis. So that's actually the help of you. Uh, that's actually the one that is uh, parang mas maliit yung activation energy when you have enzymes that help to catalyze the uh, reactant to become it the product. Okay? So Meron din tayong forms of reactions. Okay, napapansin niyo parang ang daming reactions, right? Pero ang tatandaan niyo lang is that each type of reaction actually has a different na function. 
And one of these na type of reactions is we have the anabolic and the catabolic ones. Kapag sinabi mong anabolic, meron siyang i-require na energy kasi may gagawin siya. Okay, usually when you assemble things, you require energy. Mas uh, mas kailangan mo kasi ng energy kapag magdugtong-dugtong ka ng energy ng mga molecules like you have one glucose attached to another glucose to become a disaccharide then another disaccharide attached to another disaccharide and into a, another chain hangga makagawa sila ng starch creating starch class requires energy that's why plants um, need to make their own energy using sunlight water and carbon dioxide okay kaya siya nangangailangan ng ganun because it has to create a lot of energy para makagawa ng starch. Okay, catabolic naman na processes or na metabolic na pathways are actually the ones that can release a lot of energy. At iyan ang ginagawa ng mga animals like us. So we are animals as, uh, as humans, as mammals. So you have to break down those starch to form energy. So, kailangan mo siya pag, kapag nag-breakdown ka, although you are still needing energy para sa mga first na mga part ng iyong um, catabolic na pathway, but the net na, ano, na released na product is actually greater ang energy na nagagawa than the one that is required. Kaya siya catabolic. Okay? So, when you are uh, going through a catabolic na mga processes like cellular respiration, you are going to release a lot of energy. Unlike sa photosynthesis class, which is anabolic reactions, yung sa photosynthesis kasi yung sa fur, yung paggawa ng, ano, ng, ng mga maliliit na mga molecules, doon ka mangangailangan ng energy. So magkakabaliktad silang dalawa. Right? So, kailangan nyo yan siyang tandaan because babalik-balikan nyo yan siya hanggang mag-quarter 4. Okay? So, hanggang quarter 4 yan siya na lesson. Right? So, meron din tayong about entropy but this is very, uh, hindi masyado siyang na, na, na discuss na after, after this one. But you just need to understand that entropy is actually required for uh, everything to happen. Kaya meron tayo yung halimbawa, um, meron tayong release of heat while we are um, metabolizing our, our food because that's entropy class. So although nakahit, parang minimaintain pa rin natin na it's a closed na system but because of there is an exchange of uh, matter and energy, so merong, meron talaga tayong entropy. So entropy is actually your measure of randomness sa isa or disorder in a system. So, kaya tayo na, hindi talaga natin nakoconserve lahat ng energy. So, it goes out as heat, body heat natin. It also goes out as um, meron tayo yung uh, urine natin. We have our feces. So, that's part of the uh, exchange of materials throughout our environment. Because we are an open system for energy uh, production and usage, so, entropy is really expected sa atin na mga um, mammals, right? Another thing is that you will have to know the following acronyms. So, meron tayong acronyms that you have to be familiar with in order to study more and understand yung lessons natin for this one, for the entire quarter. You have ATP, NAD, NADH, FAD, FADH2. Okay, so meron tayo yung ito siya. So you have to notice that this is an AD. Ito siya is merong H. Another one is meron again H dito banda. Ito siya. So you have to notice that the addition of actually of this hydrogen is actually an addition is ang meaning niya in redox reactions is actually the reduction of your um, this molecule. So, kapag sinabi mong reduction, this is a reduced na molecule na, na form. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, it is already carrying energy. This one, FADH2 and, and NADH, 
and a DH natin is actually, ang ibig sabihin niyan, it is already carrying energy. Meron din tayong form ng NADH, which is NADPH, NADPH. Yung NADPH natin class is uh, for your uh, photosynthesis. So, yun siya ang taga-carry din ng molecules. Pero kapag nasa cellular respiration ka na, ang ginagamit na, na, na molecule, energy carrier, is actually, energy carrying molecule is actually NADH na. So, just tandaan nyo lang yung difference. May P, NADPH kapag photosynthesis, like P for photosynthesis, and you have no P kapag cellular respiration na. Yun ang madali siyang uh, ma-memorize kagad. Okay. For your FADH2 naman, so ito siya is actually your uh, reduced na form of FAD, uh, FAD. So the meaning for this three is, I know, meron, where, meron tayong ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. We have NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So yun siya ang NAD natin. We have also FAD, which is flavine adenine dinucleotide. So, ang flavine yan class is actually from your riboflavin. So, that's your vitamin D2. Okay? Vitamin D2, yung flavine yan na part ng molecule na yan, ng vitamin, is actually added to create your uh, FAD, your flavine adenine dinucleotide. So, kaya siya required na meron kang sources of food na meron uh, rich in riboflavin or B vitamins because B vitamins are really needed for energy metabolism. Okay? So, you will know later kung saan din napupunta si pantothenic acid. Okay? So, which is vitamin B5. Okay, so meron tayong reduced na form of your NADH and FADH2. So we have uh, this one, reduced. Kapag reduced ka sa tandaan ninyo, it's already carrying energy. Kapag ganito pa lang siya na form, which is uh, FAD and NAD, ang ibig sabihin yan, it's not carrying energy. Tandaan ha, it's not carrying energy kapag walang attached na hydrogen. All right. So, yun siya ang inyong tatandaan for that one. Another thing is that meron tayo yung uh, uh, pag, uh, uh, yung parang paano nadadagdag yung energy sa kanila. So, usually, nangyayari ito sa mga processes like the redox na reactions within your um, processes natin na mamaya makikita ninyo kung saan yung mga redox na part. The redox na part actually adds the hydrogen into your energy carrying molecule. Your energy carrying molecule here class is NAD or FAD. So it's by redox reaction that hydrogen is added to them. So kapag na may na-add na, na hydrogen, that already means it is already carrying energy. The hydrogen is actually um, indicative na meron siyang electron na dinadala. And yung electron na iyon, lahat niyan sila, kapag may mga H na yan sila, lahat niyan sila pupunta na kay electron transport chain. Kapag naman na already harvested na yung energy, in the form of electrons doon sa inyong electron transport chain, babalik na naman yan sila sa glycolysis and sa inyong Krebs cycle as NAD and FAD. Okay? So, yun ang tatandaan ha. Babalik yan sila sa inyong glycolysis and Krebs cycle as NAD or FAD. Sila ay hinaharvest in the electron transport chain as NADH and FADH2. Okay. So, yun ang ating uh, part ng form. Okay. Let's go to... Okay. Let's go to ATP. Okay. So, ano bang for... Ano ba ang uh, mukha ni ATP? So, ATP is actually... Meron kang aden adenine, which is one of the for uh, nucleic ano uh, natin sa mga nucleic acids natin we have also this one your sugar which is a uh, ribose na sugar 
We have another one which is a triphosphate group. Triphosphate because tatlong phosphate. Yan siya kaya siya adenosine triphosphate. So you have here, you have here tatlong phosphate groups. So you have three par, uh, ano, mayroon kasi yung pangalan bawat phosphate na yan. The one that is nearest to your sugar is what you call as alpha. The next one here, ito siya, is gamma. And the last one, uh, beta pala, beta. And the last one is gamma. Ang pagtanggal ng phosphate class is here from the tip. Itong pinaka edge, pinaka uh, tip ng ano, which is the last one, which is your gamma. Ang re pag-release ng gamma is actually the strongest na uh, releasing of energy. Parang yan siyang sipa ng kabayo kung sa mga ibang ano pa, uh, tutorials, ang description nila. Ganun siya kalakas kasi ang kanyang energy na releasing. So, uh, your ATP is actually very strong and ito siya na type of bonding class dito sa kanila is actually uh, slightly weak but also slightly strong. Kaya nga pagtanggal mo nito is immediately malakas ang, ang energy na na natatang na nare-release niya enough to power your ATP synthase na molecule. So mamaya makikita niyo kung sino yung ATP synthase natin. So yan siya ang ating titingnan later. Okay, so this just tatandaan niyo that the one that is first na natatanggal is the gamma one. The next one is your beta, then the last one is your alpha. So na-change ang name ng ATP from ATP which is adenosine triphosphate kapag natanggalan ng gamma you have adenosine diphosphate. Natanggalan ng, ng beta, you have adenosine monophosphate. Okay? So, yun siya ang ating parts of your ATP. So, this is your parts of your ATP. Tandaan niyo yun, ha? Because that, uh, that is uh, one of the questions na most likely na-encounter niyo na sa summative test na ninyo. Alright? So, uh, this types of your um, linkages natin, we call it phosphoric anhydride. So marami tayong types ng mga linkages between your molecules. So one of them is phosphoric anhydride. So ang type na iyan is actually high energy, masyado siyang malaki, that it's really... Uh, re it's really convenient for molecules to have ATP uh, to be converted into ATP kasi masyado siyang malaki, masyado siyang malakas din ang kanyang ano. Kaya goal talaga ng bawat cell na, makari, ma, na makagawa ng kanyang ATP. Okay. May mga tan may tanong kayo most likely na ma'am, yung cellular respiration ba does it also happen in plants? Because photosynthesis lang most likely na, na ma-mention. Yes. Okay, so this is part of your um, lesson under module 5. Okay, in module 5, lahat di, uh, lahat di ba na, na ta, ng, ano, ng living organisms actually have mitochondrion. So lahat ng, my, ng merong mitochondrion also has cellular, also undergoes cellular respiration. Ma'am, bakit kailangan nila ng cellular respiration? Eh, kaya naman nila mag-photosynthesize. Class, si, uh, si plant is actually, ginagamit niya ang photosynthesis para makakreate lang ng starch. Okay, the rest of the ATPs to power that system, yung meron tayo yung light-dependent reactions and your uh, Calvin cycle, is actually nagre-require siya ng ATP from this one, cellular respiration. So animals and plants undergo cellular respiration. And commonly, it's the aerobic type. Kapag sinabi mong aerobic, ang ibig sabihin, it will be requiring this one, ito, the mitochondrion. Kapag hindi kasi uh, nangyayari sa loob ng mitochondrion, Ang ibig sabihin niyan, it's an anaerobic na pathway. Kapag anaerobic na pathway class, that means it's it happens in your cyto 
plasm at it does not involve your mitochondria. Kaya nga yung ibang animals or the uh, your prokaryotes, yung masyado maliliit natin ng mga organisms, dahil sa hindi sila, ang iba sa kanila have no mitochondria, ang ibig sabihin, it's in their uh, cytoplasm that they uh, make their own energy. And that's why it's the microorganisms that actually are involved in anaerobic na respiration. Kaya yung mga fermentation natin na processes, ang nai-involve usually are your prokaryotes. Okay. So, although na meron, nangyayari din siya for animals, kung during lactic acid na fermentation natin, na uh, lactic acid na formation natin, so yan siya is still uh, nangyayari because hindi na ito kinaya. Kasi in, uh, this one actually requires oxygen. So, kapag may shortage ng oxygen, saka siya mangyayari sa cytoplasm. So, most of the organisms, sometimes mga, mga anaerobes, uh, anaerobic ones, are the ones that are actually do not uh, toxic kasi sa kanilang oxygen. So, kaya hindi sila makaka-intake ng oxygen. So, para sa kanila, dahil sa hindi sila makaka-intake, so hindi nila gagamitin sa mitochondrion for respiration. So, instead, they'll do it in the cytoplasm. Okay? So, uh, the connection between your photosynthesis and cellular respiration is Usually, di ba, parating na ma-mention na kung ano yung hininga ng tao, galing siya sa kay plant. And it's correct. Okay, you just need to remember that plants actually provides your oxygen. And those, uh, ito yung oxygen natin, itong oxygen is required to uh, produce energy in the form of ATP via your mitochondria. The process is called cellular respiration here. Kaya yung mga most of the times na uh, ma-feel ninyo na, ah, kailangan kumain talaga ako because masyado, or iinom na ako ng mainit na, ka, na kape or na, na chocolate or something mainit na, na inumin. It's because I have to create energy. And energy is actually released as body heat. Um, kaya meron tayong yung sinabi nating entropy because there are disorders in a system. Be kaya ninyo kailangan ng uh, kailangan mag-consume ng mga pagkain. And that's why you are producing also carbon dioxide and water, which is water in your urine or your sweat. So that's part of the ones that are going back into your, uh, your this one, your photosynthesis doon sa inyong mga chloroplasts. So in that way, yung cycle ng needs natin at ng needs ng plant is actually very beneficial for our ecosystem and our environment. Kaya siya, hindi pwede na mawalan tayo ng plants. It's because very dependent tayo sa ano ang binibigay ng plants. Okay? So, yun siya. Unless lang kung makaano tayo, makagawa tayo ng sangkatutak na uh, sangkatutak na oxygen. So, uh, without the plants, so that's the time that probably hindi natin kailangan si plants, but ngayon is actually we need them so much. Alright? So, another thing that you have to relate also is that breathing is also a part of cellular respiration. So, although na, if this is a lesson for quarter four, breathing is actually kailangan yung maintindihan that it also supplies your carbon dioxide and oxygen into your body. So, kailangan natin ng oxygen because we have the oxidative na phosphorylation which happens in your electron transport chain. Kasi sa electron transport chain na yan siya nangyayari. So, kailangan natin yan siya because cellular respiration na aerobic na type actually cannot happen without your uh, breathing natin. Kung hindi tayo humihinga, hindi yan siya masusuplayan ng oxygen. Hindi din tayo masusuplayan ng, ng oxygen that is needed to uh, finish the process of your oxidative phosphorylation in your electron transport chain. So, kaya nga 
nakakamatay ang hindi makahinga. At kaya nga rin na in- involuntary ang reflex natin for breathing. We cannot control it and it's a part of our body na, na homeostatic na um, regulation. It's because it has to be uh, uh, it has to be supplied regularly. Yung oxygen natin is actually kailangan siya na susupplied regularly. Okay? So, because cellular respiration is very much dependent on oxygen, kailangan siya na hindi dapat under our control because malay mo, pag matulog ka, naklimutan mo, palang huminga. Okay? So, ganun siya ka, uh, ano, very important ang ating uh, breathing na for your cellular respiration. Okay? Let's go to this table. This table is actually... Hindi yan siya nalagay sa inyong module dahil sa yung module ninyo is kailangan siya mag-fit into six pages and required yan siya sa amin sa senior high school. Sorry class ha, we are not in junior high school. Uh, although ang junior high school, sang katutak katu- at katu- sang katerbang papel lang sa kanila, ang sa atin kasi is regulated ang paper for senior high school. We only are allowed to manufacture six pages per module. Okay. So, that's the maximum. Kung meron ka mang mag-extra niyan, masusobra, that's actually mag-ano na siya, parang you have to ask permission pa. So, yung parang hindi na kami mag-ask ng permission, finifit na lang namin sa six. Okay? Kasi mahirap ang mag-explain kung bakit sumobra siya. Okay. So, we have here your uh um, guide sa differences and similarities between your aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Okay, tandaan niyo that cellular respiration has two types. Meron tayong aerobic, which requires oxygen, and we have one that is anaerobic, which does not require oxygen. Tandaan ha, meron tayong dalawa. Okay. In aerobic respiration, yung um, ATP actually is created with the use of oxygen and food is, uh, yung ATP na production can be made from carbon, carbohydrate, lipid, or protein. Yung anaerobic naman class, it depends on the organism. So, sa aerobic class, kahit ano lang, basta may oxygen ka, okay lang. But for anaerobic, it depends on the organism kung alin lang ang pwede niyang i-convert sa and into energy without the uh, presence of oxygen. Another thing that you have to remember is that aerobic respiration it happens in your cytoplasm and your mitochondrion. Unlike your anaerobic respiration na hindi nagagawa sa inyong mitochondrion, si aerobic respiration is dalawa. It will start in the cytoplasm via your glycolysis and it ends up in your mitochondrion as your electron transport chain. Okay? So, yun ang tatandaan natin for your aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Another thing is the amount of energy it can produce. See, aerobic respiration class can produce up to 36 to 38 and meron tayong record that it can also produce 40 sa advanced microbiology na niya class sa masteral, it actually can achieve 40. Meron tayong maximum na 40 or 42, depending on the type of organism. For humans, it's 38 to, uh, 36 to 38. Ang pinakamaliit sa atin is 32. Ang pinakamataas sa atin is 38. Yan ang sa humans ha. Tandaan niyo, it's a range 36, uh, 32 to 38. So, hindi siya actually nakalock into 36 lang. Huwag niyo yan siyang i-memorize na 36 lang because it's actually naka, and it's a range that's uh, yung actual natin na production ng ATP. For anaerobic respiration naman, it's actually 2 ATP per glucose molecule. Ganun siya kaliit and sadly, uh, we actually use it kapag wala tayong nakunu- na kulangan tayo ng ng uh, oxygen. Kaya nga um, 
usually, ginagamit ito for exercise, yung mga nagsa-study ng sports medicine or sports nutrition, uh, we actually study them as part of our lesson. Yung sa ano, kasi I have uh, part ng lessons namin for diet uh, and nutrition therapy is actually sports nutrition. So, kailangan alam mo kung, pa- kung kailan kailangan ng isang tao ang uh, ang 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 pakaniyang uh, parang conversion of your extra na carbohydrate, yung stored mo na carbohydrate into energy. So, sometimes meron tayo yung mga ganyan na pathways, but for this one, because you're still in high school, we will only focus on carbohydrate. Okay? Hindi tayo magpupunta sa uh, protein and lipid na metabolism only for carbohydrate. Alright? Another is, si aerobic respiration is long-term. As long as buhay ka, as long as meron ka pang mitochondrion, as long as your cells are still there, so you can still do aerobic respiration. But for anaerobic respiration, it's short-term. Hindi niya kayang isustain yan siya for a very long time. Kaya nga yung, yung athlete, Uh, commonly sa kanila, they take in lungfuls of air para lang ma-replenish yung oxygen. Part of their training is actually breathing exercises because they have to replace the lost oxygen. Alam dapat nila kung kailan na siya nagiging lactic acid na, uh, na formation at kailan siya nagiging ATP na production via your aerobic respiration. So, kaya, that's part of their training sa mga athletes. Another is, si aerobic respiration does not produce the lactic acid. Hindi niya yan siya pinuproduce. Si anaerobic respiration lang ang nagpuproduce niyan via the lactic acid fermentation na pathway. Okay, it's a different na pathway and meron tayong acetic acid na fermentation din na pathway but that's for another organism. For humans, it's lactic acid na fermentation ang pathway natin kapag wala ng oxygen. Okay, so another is uh, si aerobic respiration is kaya niyang mag-recycle ng NADH. So ang kanyang pagre-recycle ng NADH is actually through your electron transport system. Diba kanina sinabi ko, si NADH is actually an energy Uh, carrying molecule. So, kapag and may H na yan siya, ang ibig sabihin, it's already uh, it's already carrying energy. So, kapag nag, ano, pupunta na yan siya kay uh, electron transport chain, doon yan siya hinaharvest yung hydrogen niya. At babalik na naman siya kay glycolysis and your crab cycle as NAD. Doon siya na recycle kay ETC, electron transport chain. Sa anaerobic respiration naman class, it's actually a very closed system. Uh, andun lang siya, para siyang iso, uh, iso, uh, closed na system. Kukuha lang siya from the environment, then doon niya iikot, ikot, ikot. So sa kay lactic acid fermentation, si, si pyruvate naman class, which is a product of glycolysis, is na convert into carbon dioxide and ethanol. So doon siya na iikot, ikot lang. So Kapag natanggalan siya, babalik na naman siya. Doon lang siya kay, sa loob ng uh, lactic acid na fermentation na pathway. Doon lang siya na babalik-balik na nagagamit. So most of the cells actually are doing an aerobic respiration. But for anaerobic respiration, it's commonly your yeast uh, sa mga bread natin. We have other fungi na gumagamit din ng anaerobic respiration. So most of the fung uh, sa kingdom na fungi, it's actually commonly sa kanila talaga is ana- by anaerobic respiration. Most of your prokaryotes actually is by anaerobic respiration except for your uh, cyanobacteria which actually undergoes aerobic respiration. And you have your muscle cells when it is already uh, short of oxygen supply. Okay? So, ang muscle cells natin can only sustain 
very ano very short na period ng lactic acid fermentation okay so meron tayo yung mga ano uh, ano ba yung pagkaka mga similarities ng dalawa so dalawas ang aerobic and anaerobic both undergo glycolysis in your site of a plasm of the cell tandaan that glycolysis always happen in the cytoplasm of your cell and they both undergo substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation in the form of chemiosmosis to produce your ATP molecules. So the Lawad, both of them also can split your glucose, na six carbon molecule, into molecules of pyruvate. Yung dalawang molecules ng pyruvate, which is a product of glycolysis in to a three carbon na molecule. So three carbon molecule kasi yan si pyruvate which kung meron kang oxygen it enters Krebs cycle if wala ka namang oxygen it enters lactic acid fermentation na pathway. Okay, so lahat sila ay may enzymes and they both use NAD and kapag na re reduce siya it becomes NADH. And they can be performed by both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. So, ganun ka-importante ang ating aerobic, ang ating cellular respiration sa ating mga organisms. Okay. For this one, itong differences nila because ang dami na niyan, okay, you will have to read them by yourself. So, the copy is actually sa, is sa send ko sa inyo ulit na link later. Okay sa inyong class group chat. Okay. So, let's have this one. Okay. Let's go to this one. All right. Okay. So, this is your diagram, which is not included in your module again. Okay. So, this is the difference between your anaerobic and aerobic processes. So, Although na source sila ng energy, both of them are sources of energy, the one that can produce a lot of energy is this one, your aerobic respiration. Ang final na hydrogen electron na acceptor natin for this one is actually oxygen. And the process is actually like this one. Ito siya. So this is ATP plus carbon dioxide plus water. So yan siyang usual na nasa equation niya. Okay, as its uh, product. For your anaerobic respiration naman, ang and, uh, hydrogen electron trans, uh, acceptor is an inner inorganic form which is a uh, nitric acid natin or nitric acid. It's a nitrate. Okay, so meron tayo yung nitrate natin, this one. So this is a ATP, ang product niya is ATP plus carbon dioxide. Meron din siyang carbon dioxide as your product. And yung reduced na acceptor, which is the nitrite. Okay, this is nitrite, NO2 minus, that's your nitrite. Sa mga ibang organisms naman, yung anaerobic nila actually undergoes fermentation. So sa fermentation class, it's the same for us. Uh, it's the lactic acid fermentation natin na process kapag wala tayong nag-short tayo ng supply ng oxygen. So, ang nagiging hydrogen electron trans uh, acceptor dito, instead of an oxygen, si pyruvate ang nag-act as uh, the final electron tran acceptor. So, ito siya ang nagiging acceptor niya, which is pyruvate. Ang nagiging product naman, usually, sa process na mga, ng fermentation is ATP, which is only two molecules, carbon dioxide, meron din siya, and you have your reduced na organic molecule, which is an alcohol. Okay? Kaya ginagamit siya natin para gumawa ng ating ethanol natin, which is your alcohol na fermentation, like your wines, distilled na spirits, okay, so, or, or your rum, okay, so, yan siya, or beer, so, those are the products of fermentation natin. Right? So, glycolysis actually class uh, happens in the cytosol. Cytosol is the fluid in your cytoplasm. Kung napagay mas ano pa ano class, kung yung pangutan na pagin mo, asa man sa cytoplasm, nangya, saan ba siya nangyari? Si glycolysis is actually in the cytosol, which is your... Uh, 
your yung ating ano natin, yung fluid natin in your cytoplasm. So in glycolysis, glucose becomes a three carbon molecule, dalawang three carbon because three plus three is equal to six. Mm -hmm. So you have dalawang gluco, uh, three carbon molecule. The three carbon molecule here is your pyruvate. Your six carbon molecule here is glucose. Dito lang siya nagiging six carbon molecule pag enter niya. Okay. So it will undergo further na oxidation na process which is to convert pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme A para makapasok siya kay Krebs cycle. Okay, kay Krebs cycle has several names. Okay, ang problema is ang dami niya sa sobrang yang daming names like nakakaloka siya ng actually sa rami. There are actually four names that I know and sa sa four names na iyan ang parati lang ginagamit plus is you have the Krebs cycle and you have the citric acid cycle. Sometimes it's abbreviated to TCA. TCA is the citric acid. Okay. The citric acid. Yang TCA cycle. Okay. So, yan siyang usual na ginagamit. And we have your ETC, uh, your electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, which is by oxidative phosphorylation. So, ito yan siya ang dito sa in, uh Ang products kasi ng citric acid ice, uh, cycle, which is your NADH and FADH2, yun ang papasok dito sa oxidative phosphorylation sa electron transport chain. Tandaan ha? So, ito yung sequence ng ating mga stay, uh, ng mga nangyayari sa cellular respiration. So, if you have oxygen, ito yung sequence natin. You have glycolysis, which is in the cytosol of the cytoplasm. You have pyruvate oxidation, which is in the, uh, which is in the mitochondrion. You have your citric acid cycle, which is inside the matrix. Nasa matrix. When you say matrix, it's inside the inner mem membrane of your mitochondrion. Kasi meron siyang outer, meron din siyang inner. So sa inner niya, sa loob niya, yung mga folded na cristae natin, mga folded na parts niya, so doon nangyayari ang citric acid cycle. The oxidative na phosphorylation class actually happens uh, in the boundaries between your uh, inner na, uh, membrane and your matrix. So dyan siya uh, ano, and the intermembrane na surface. So, so ang intermembrane class is the the space between your outer membrane and the inner membrane of your mitochondrion. So, doon siya nangyayari si oxidative phosphorylation. Alright? So, meron tayo yung ano, types of fermentation that can happen kapag walang oxygen. So, commonly, this one, yung lactic acid fermentation natin, ito yung nangyayari sa humans kapag wala na tayong oxygen. So we use this one na pathway. So it has only a net na ATP of 2. We have also alcohol fermentation, which is dalawang ATP lang din ang kayang iproduce nito. So for this one, it will still produce um, ATP, pero uh, ethanol na ang, ang kanyang byproduct. Okay? So meron tayong alcohol fermentation. So, this is the yield of, a, of your ATP from glucose oxidation. So, meron tayo yung um, differences. So, napapansin ninyo, meron tayong dalawa na types. Okay. It matters kasi class because depende na yan siya sa anong pathways ang dadaanan niya. Ang common kasi sa atin is the malate aspartate na shuttle, which is for humans. This is the one. And uh, ang iba naman ng mga uh, organisms will actually use the gl uh, glycerol phosphate shuttle. Okay, kaya 30 lang sa uh, kanila. Sa humans naman, we start at 32. This is the minimum. Ang maximum natin is 38. Okay, so kaya natin mag-produce niya. So this is NADH and FADH2. Napapansin ninyo in glycolysis, so, in glyco glycolysis natin, dalawang, uh, dalawang um, ATP ang kaya niyang i-real, pero nasa last na siya na portions. 
napapansin ninyo, it's on the last portion, this one. Ito siya. Sa last na siya, nakakaproduce ng ATP. Nasa last na siya na portion. The first part kasi ng inyong glycolysis actually requires energy. Kaya siya nagma-minus-minus dito. Okay, negative-negative means it is requiring ATP. Pambayad siya. So it's, uh, ang tawag dyan sa ating glycolysis is we call it the investment phase. Ang next na part is actually the payoff na phase. Ang payoff na phase is actually the one that is, yun na ang nag-release ng energy na magkakaroon ka na ng parang profit mo. Kung halimbawa, nag-invest ka dito, like nakunan ka ng pera, but sa second na part is actually bumalik na yung uh, yung kapital mo at nagkaroon ka pa ng profit mo. Okay? Nagkaroon pa kaginan siya. So that's the, ano, for your, uh, for your ATP sa na production for glycolysis. Another is you have your pyruvate na conversion to acetyl coenzyme A. Ito siya. So, ang um, napoproduce dito is actually not ATP, but actually NADH. So, ang NADH dito, diretsyo yan siya kay, uh, diretsyo kay ETC, which is electron transport chain. Doon yan siya napapasok. Another is we have your citric acid cycle, which also happens in the mitochondria. So, sa mitochondria ninyo, ang ATP niya is nasa first na part na production. First part of its production is actually doon siya nagagawa ang ATP. And it's actually in the form of GTP. Tandaan ha? It's actually guanosine triphosphate. Hindi siya ATP. Meron kasing conversion niyan na nangyayari after guanosine uh, triphosphate is actually made. Nakoconvert siya into ATP. But actually, tandaan niyo ito ha, Citric acid cycle by itself does not produce ATP but it's actually in the form of GTP. Meron lang siyang sub, uh, sub cycle na gagawin para makonvert ang GTP into ATP. Makikita nyo yan mamaya sa ating lesson. Okay. Then the next one is wala ng ATP. Ito napapansin niyo dito. Wala ng ATP but instead it will be creating NADH, na maraming NADH, napapansin nyo, it's actually quite large, ang kaya niyang iproduce na NADH, and you have FAD, FAD H2. Okay, ma'am, asa magit sa ilahang duha ang mas dako kung magdala o energy? Actually, it's your um, FAD H2. So, ang pinakamataas class is ATP, you have next is ADP, AMP, then you have your FADH2, NADH. Yan siya ang pinaka, uh, ano natin na mga energy na molecules. So sila yung parang pasunod nila. Ano yung pa, mas malakas sa kanila. This one is actually quite larger ang kaya niyang iproduce na energy in the ATC. Kapag makonvert na siya into ATP. Mas malaki si FADH2, pero mas marami kasing NADH than the FADH2. Okay. So, yan ang tatandaan nyo ha. Napapansin ninyo, mas maraming napoproduce na NADH than FADH2. Alright? So, your, in your oxidative phosphorylation, which happens in your electron transport chain, dito na nakoconvert yung energy. Napapansin ninyo, dito sa first part, which is glycolysis and pyruvate, konting-konti lang ang ATPs na nagagawa. Compared to this one, sa oxidative phosphorylation, ito yung tatandaan ninyo, mas maraming ATP ang nagagawa ng electron transport chain than the glycolysis and pyruvate oxidation and the uh, citric acid cycle or your Krebs cycle. Mas marami si ATC. Okay? So dito na kasi hinaharvest yung molecule ng NADH and FADH2. Dito na sila pumapasok para maging ATP molecule. Kaya nga, puro negative na yan siya dito. Kasi dito yan sila na co-convert. Okay, you notice that here you have 2, 2, 2, 6. You have here na positive na uh, 2, 2, 2, 6. You have here the negative 2, 2, 2, 6. Because they are already converted dito. 
sa oxidative phosphorylation. Sa FADH2 naman, siya ay nagagawa sa Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle lang siya nagagawa and it is converted into energy here sa inyong electron transport chain by oxidative phosphorylation. Tandaan ninyo ito na table because you will be going back here again and again and again hanggang matapos ang entire na lesson na ito for this lesson. Okay? So this is the table that you will need to familiarize yourself with. Tandaan niyo lang, you don't need to memorize the numbers. You actually need to understand anong meaning ng mga negative and positive na numbers na ito. Okay? At ano ang value nito kapag mag-intindi mag ka na sa entire na cellular respiration process. Okay? So you can go back here if you need to remember this one. I'll upload it in YouTube, ang video again, para may balikan kayo ulit na lesson. Right, sa stages naman ng cellular respiration, balikan natin ito. Tandaan natin that in glycolysis, sa glycolysis, nakoconvert si glucose into pyruvate, 6 carbon molecule to 3 carbon molecule. Tapos, lahat ng kanyang NADH, FADH2 na nagagawa dito are actually going into your electron transport chain. Notice this one, itong arrow na ito. Yan. That's actually the one that is carrying NADH and FADH2. Tandaan din that from our table kanina, you have here, ito ang nakakagawa lang ng FADH2. The rest is gumagawa ng NADH. And ATP is actually created here sa glycolysis and here sa acetic acid cycle and here sa oxidative phosphorylation via your electron transport chain. Walang ATP na nagagawa from your pyruvate oxidation. Pyruvate oxidation is only a sub-process required to convert your pyruvate into your acetyl coenzyme A para makapasok siya kay citric acid cycle. Okay? Tandaan yan ha. Walang ATP here na nagagawa, only NADH. And FADH2 is exclusively created here sa citric acid cycle. Alright? Okay. So, this is your... Um, one of the examples na ipapa, pinapagawa sa inyo sa inyong modules, you can answer that one, ano yung molecules na pumapasok, ano yung molecules na uh, lumalabas. So that's part of your exercises para maintindihan ninyo ano yung mga types of molecules like ATP. Is it required in glycolysis? Does it, uh, is it uh, act, ask in glycolysis? Or siya yung napuproduce ni glycolysis? Okay, it's actually both. Hinihingi siya ni glycolysis at napoproduce din siya ni glycolysis. So, balikan niyo lang yung table ninyo here. Yan siya. Alright? So, next is we have your chemical events in respiration. Ano yung sequences and major na events natin? So, this is a uh, Q&A na portion. So, may sagot na kayo dyan sa baba. <laughs> Alright, so that's part of, uh, you can actually review this one just to answer your uh, module. Para mas maintindihan ninyo yung module, you can review this one later on your own. Okay? So, isa yan siya sa mga dapat ninyong i-exercise para may maintindihan kayo sa lesson natin today. Alright. So, meron tayo yung another one is... You have here another, which is a concept map. So, sa concept map natin, pwede kayong, uh, pwede kayong again, makapag-review uh, for your for your modules, okay? Para ma mas maintindihan ninyo yung lesson. Another thing is a review for your equation of your photosynthesis para mabalikan ninyo ulit. So, tandaan ninyo bakit si glucose ay parati kong minamention na sa 6 carbon molecule. Here is your 6 carbons dito na portion. Okay? 6 carbon na molecules. Alright? So, ito yung naging, ano, ito yung input, itong pumapasok kay aerobic respiration, your glucose, 
oxygen and the amount of um, ADP. Okay, tandaan ninyo, it's ADP ang papasok. Lalabas siya as ATP. And tandaan ninyo that uh, this is maximum, ang 38. Minimum is 32. Maximum is 38. Okay, so you have here your product which is carbon dioxide, water, and this one ATP. Alright, so saan nangyayari nga ang glycolysis natin? Glycolysis happens in your cytosol of the cytoplasm. Si citric acid cycle naman ay nangyayari sa inyong uh, matrix. Si electron transport chain naman ang ay nangyayari sa inyong here, sa intermembrane space, which is uh, here sa side na ito. This is your outer membrane. And this is your inner membrane. This is your intermembrane space. This is your matrix. So dito siya banda, here banda. So it actually shut us up. Uh, on and off out here dito na portion okay so yan siya ang ating uh, overview for your aerobic respiration so how many pathways are there for uh, cellular na aerobic respiration actually ang pathways natin for cellular aerobic respiration is kapag cellular aerobic so meron tayong 1 2 3 4 and 5 Usually, hindi na ito sinasali. There are only four kasi most likely, say pyruvate oxidation, hindi yan siya sinasali most likely sa pag-count. So, meron lang tayong glucose by uh, conversion of glucose to pyruvate, which is glycolysis, to Krebs cycle, to electron transport chain. Kaya siya nagiging tatlo. Okay? So, commonly yan siya ang namamention. Then, you have anaerobic respiration. Sa anaerobic respiration naman class, meron ka lang dalawa glycolysis and the conversion of your uh, subs, uh, your product which is your either an alcohol, a lactic acid, or your acetic acid. So yun siyang nagiging ano lang, uh, processes, metabolic pathways na dadaanan ng uh, without oxygen. Okay? So how many ATP molecules ang, na ang nakukuha? If it is uh, using uh, without oxygen na pathway, metabolic na pathway, dalawa lang na ATP. Kapag ito naman ang gagamitin niya, ito siya, hanggang sa electron transport chain, you have a maximum of 38 and a minimum of 32 ATPs for humans. Okay? So, for humans. Alright? So, ano yung nangyayari sa inyong ATP? So, this is the theoretical yield. So, ang commonly na nasa mga libro are 36 so, you have 32 to 38. 36 is still included class. So, huwag nyo nang i-debate yan dahil debate yan siya ng mga molecular scientist hanggang ngayon. So, nakakasakit siya ng ulo actually. Okay. So, uh, the counting is, tandaan that um, ATP is actually um, created by glyco uh, glucose, uh, glycolysis. Ang glycolysis can produce as much as um, two ATPs. So, yung NADH is actually converted into ATP in your electron transport chain. Okay. Ang pyruvate naman can produce as much as two NADH na nagiging ATP din. Okay. The, uh, the conversion here is actually quite big because this is a high energy molecule ang nagagawa ng pyruvate na nakikaring niya. So, mas malaki siya ang kanyang conversion. Okay, another is we have your acetyl coenzyme A na papasok kay Krebs cycle. Si Krebs naman class can produce as much as this energy. Siyang mas may maraming mapuproduce na NADH and FADH2 kaya mas malaki yung kanyang conversion ng energy sa electron transport chain. Tandaan ha, eto lahat ay mga converted na values na except this one and this one which is pure ATP. Okay, ito siya at ito are the ones that enter your electron transport chain to produce this yield, net, uh, ATP yield, which is 36 na ATPs. Okay, so this is your uh, overview of your glycolysis. Okay, let's go to glycolysis muna. Okay, glycolysis kasi class actually happens in your 
cytosol of your cytoplasm. So commonly, it is uh, produced uh, by substrate level phosphorylation. Kapag sinabi mo kasing substrate level class, sa substrate level, hindi ka, hindi ka tipong uh, yung addition mo ng oxy, ay, ng eight, ng um, ng phosphate group ng magiging gamma mo uh, hindi siya via your ATP synthase na molecule. So, yan siya is actually the oxidative na phosphorylation sa um, electron transfer chain. Sa substrate level, phosphorylation kasi class, as in manual ang pag-add ng, AD, ng, ano, ng ADP at ng, ng inyong phosphate na ano, group para makagawa ng ATP. So this one can happen in your glycolysis. So glycolysis is anaerobic. Tandaan ha, si glycolysis is by itself anaerobic. It does not require oxygen. It can produce energy without oxygen. Tandaan ha, glycolysis is anaerobic. And it does not require oxygen. Kapag nagre-require na ng oxygen, ang after niyan, saka siya pumapasok until your electron transfer chain. Kapag naman hindi siya nangangailangan ng oxygen, ay kapag naman walang oxygen at that point, diretso siya into fermentation, anaerobic respiration. Okay? So saan nangyayari si glycolysis? It's in the cytoplasm. Alright. So glycolysis by, by uses substrate level phosphorylation. So sa substrate level phosphorylation class, you just need a phosphorylated substrate yung in yung phosphate group. So meron siyang parang addition na something na py, like pyruvate. Si pyruvate ang parang tagahungit, ta, uh, tagasubo kay uh, uh, phosphate group into your ADP para maging ATP siya. Tandaan ha? So, para siyang sinubo lang. So, at this point kasi, nagiging ano ito, ito siya is uh, phosphoenol na pyruvate or PEP. So, ang phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP is actually isusubo niya ang a, uh, phosphate group sa ADP pagkatapos para makagawa ng ATP at ang product nito is actually your pyruvate. This is at the last portion of your glycolysis. Okay, you will know this one later. Itong mga products na ito, you can check it out in your table sa module 6. Okay, so sa glycolysis ninyo, which is meron kayong phosphoenol pyruvate as one of your products na inyong magiging uh, na magko-convert na into pyruvate. So actually, ang for, ano niya lang, purpose niya lang para maging ganito is para makagawa lang ng ATP. Okay, so carbohydrate metabolism class is actually by cellular aerobic respiration or either into fermentation. So pwede siyang either ano, cellular aerobic respiration kung kaya niya maka-generate ng 32 to 38 or Ano tayo yung average natin ni usual sa mga textbooks natin na 36 ATP. So, ang kapag naman nasa ano siya, fermentation or anaerobic naman siya, it is less efficient kasi it can only generate 2 ATP. So, kapag ganito ang sa atin nag ang byproduct niya is actually lactic acid fermentation, uh, lactic acid which is medyo painful siya sa inyong muscles. And napapansin ninyo, nawawala siya kaagad after. Kasi madaling ilang man yan siya na break down din si lactic acid into other na compounds ng ating katawan. So, binibreak down siya kaagad kasi because it has to be uh, hindi, hindi siya maganda sa katawan kasi it causes pain and it accumulates in your joints. Okay? So, doon siya na, na for four. Another is, we have the names of your glycolysis. Ang glycolysis kasi class, which is 
sa mga higher na biology, sa mga mag-ABE dyan, mag-agricultural na biosystems engineering, and we have your um, agriculture, mag-take ng veterinary medicine or medical-related na mga courses or medicine, ito yung dapat nyo i-memorize, the names. Okay, you have glycolysis. The other name for glycolysis is Emden Meyerhoff pathway. So, yan siya ang other name niya. So, it's actually the Emden and Meyerhoff are actually the scientists who actually describe the entire na process of glycolysis kaya siya ipinangalan sa kanila. Tandaan ha? There's another name for glycolysis. Okay. So, ano yung se sequence natin? Say, so, glycolysis is actually the first part of aerobic respiration. Tandaan niyo ha? Aerobic kapag gagamit siya ng oxygen. And it's the first part, si glycolysis, dyan sa whole na process na ito. Okay, so you, sa, si glycolysis naman class can produce some ATP. It's because only 4 ATPs ang kaya niyang i-produce but out of those 4, dalawa lang actually yun siya, ang net niya kasi ginamit niya ang iba para makagawa ng more ATP. Okay. So, ang pinakmarami niyang mas napoproduce is actually NADH. Okay? So, ang trabaho niya lang is i-convert si glucose into pyruvic acid or pyruvate para makagawa ng ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. Ang, si ang next naman niyan is actually your citric acid uh, cycle na ang mangyayari dyan is i-oxidize nila at, at it at i-decarboxylate ang acetyl into carbon dioxide with some ATP and ADH and FADH2 as uh, your product. So, si carbon dioxide is actually product siya ng citric acid cycle. Tandaan ha? Citric acid cycle is on, can produce carbon dioxide. The rest of the whole natin na mga ano, mga like glycolysis, electron transport chain, hindi yan sila nagpo-produce ng carbon dioxide. It's only in the Krebs cycle. Alright? So, in electron transport chain naman, si ATP ang nag-generate nito, uh, daghanan, and you have your NADH and FADH2 are oxidized, so natatanggalan sila ng hydrogen, at na uh, oxidation kasi means loss of hydrogen. So, meron tayo yung ano, yung uh, nagig, it, ang nagiging product niya is NAD, FAD, A, uh, FAD, then you have your AD, uh, ATP. Yun ang product ng electron transport chain. Okay, so yan ang sequence ng ating processes dito. Alright? So, ano yung sequence for uh, glycolysis? So, ang glycolysis, because it happens in the cytosol, so pwede siya na kahit walang oxygen, okay lang siya. Ito naman si pyruvate, ito siya, si pyruvate na oxidation, si Krebs cycle, si electron transport chain requires oxygen because it can only happen in your mitochondria. So ito yung mga places wherein they happen and you have to memorize them all. Right? So this is the structure of your mitochondria. So before your glycolysis happens, dito siya, uh, hindi siya papasok dito sa entire na mitochondrion na ito. Walang mangyayaring glycolysis sa is loob ng inyong mitochondrion. It's uh, instead nasa cytosol siya. So there are actually 10 steps for glycolysis. Meron tayong 10. And the first 5 is actually the investment phase. So meron tayo yung tinatawag investment na phase. And the second part is actually the payoff na phase. Like, payoff siya because yung in-invest mo, nakapital mo na ATP is actually babalik sa'yo marami ng ATP. Okay. So, this is the first part the, uh, for your glycolysis na pathway. The first part is meron kang dalawang ATP na papasok. Okay. That it actually, notice this one. Ito siya. The sign kung saan na uh, pumapasok siya. This is ATP converted into ADP dahil sa dinonate mo ang phosphate group here to become glucose 6-phosphate. So you have the first enzyme here para mangyari ito siya na pag 
kikleave ng ox, uh, ng phosphate group into the oxygen na part, part ng uh, sixth na carbon ng inyong glucose para maging glucose 6-phosphate. Another thing is you have the rearrangement na itatransfer niya from this hexagonal na structure into a pentagonal structure. So, i-rearrange uh, niya. May rearrangement plus because it has to uh, happen because para madali na lang ang pag-a-add nito, kung sa hexagonal kasi hindi siya equal ang pag-cut mamaya. So, dito, kailangan niya i-rearrange lang siya. Okay? May... Kailangan i-rearrange siya kasi paghati mamaya ng pentagonal structure na iyan, madali na lang siya ang maghati into G3P here. Glycer uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So napapansin niyo madali siyang pagkahaka-hati. So you have here, this is actually isomers. Magkapareho yan sila lahat. Number of uh, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and phosphate. Magkapareho sila. But they are of um, dissimilar na structure. Magkakaiba silang ng structure. So these are structural isomers. So glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate are actually structural isomers. Yan siya ang ating tatandaan. Ha? Another one is meron kang denonate na na, another na naman na a, um, phosphate from your ATP to become ADP. So this one is, di ba, meron kang libre dito, another, another side na naman na pwedeng dadagdagan. So kaya dito meron kang nadagdag again na phosphate. So dahil sa ready na ito for cutting off na equally, because both sides are, are equal na pwede mo na siyang i-separate. Ano, i so you have here your dihydroxy acid na phosphate which is immediately nakoconvert into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So G3P na yan sila. Immediately kasi nakoconvert ka agad yan siya. Okay? So you have here isomerase again dito na papasok na enzyme para makonvert ka again siya. Alright? So you have here, dito napapasok si NAD because uh, si phosphate here is actually very much na strong na and dahil sa masyado na siyang uh, harvestable na kasi yung energy dito class. So kaya siya papasok na si NAD dito. So here NAD uh, is actually mag-harvest na siya ng energy. So here, napapansin ninyo naging NADH na siya. Itong NADH na ito, papasok na ito into electron transport chain. It will be shuttled off there. Doon na siya. Kasi i-convert sa NADH into ATP na sa electron transport chain. Okay. Because pumasok na sa NADH, ang ibig sabihin, thus here, ito siya, si 1,3-biphosphoglycerate uh, uh, bi is actually ready na siya for your harvesting of ATP because nakuha na ni NADH yung electrons na pwede niyang i-harvest. So, pwede na siyang maging uh, hinarvest na dito at this point, stage 7. So, at stage 7, nag-harvest ka again ng iyong ATP, which is here. So naging dahil sa nakuha na yung isang um, isang uh, phosphate which is at ano yun we have your carbon 1 here ito siya first na carbon kaya siya yung sinabi na 1 3 it's actually the position of your phosphate 1 and carbon 3 ito 1 2 3 yan siya kasi ang counting for carbon plus ha tandaan niyo yan para hindi kayo malito kung bakit Ma'am, ganun na may 1, tapos kama 3. Okay. So, it's actually, the term na by actually refers to dalawang phosphate attached to a glycerate na, na molecules. Okay. So, here, dahil sa harvested na yung first na, ano, the phosphate here at carbon 1, kaya siya naging 3 kasi na, ang naiwan na lang na phosphate is at carbon 3. Tandaan ha? kung bakit naging 3 na yung name niya. So, its name is already changed to 3-phosphoglycerate. Tanga tandaan niya din na natanggal yung bis, bis na term. The bis form actually refers to yung dalawa. So, dahil wala ng dalawa, so 
phosphoglycerate na lang siya. Okay? So, at uh, another one is, nag-rearrange na naman, nilagay niya, i-transferred the phosphate here at carbon 2. Ang tandaan ha, anong nangyari sa 8? Tina, nag-transfer lang siya ng phosphate into carbon 2 here para makaharvest siya ng water. Okay? Kasi madali man ito harvest ng water, ito na portion here. Dito siya. Ito na portion dito. Napansin niya yung natanggal. Okay, you have here CH2. Natanggalan na siya. And you have here uh, your hydrogen here na natanggal din because it was already converted into oxy uh, into your water. So, glycolysis alone can produce water. Okay? Tandaan niya ha? It can produce water. So, here, na dahil it's already at a point where it can be harvested by substrate level phosphorylation, yung sinabi ko kanina na type ng uh, conversion of AT, uh, creation of ATP. So, si phosphoenol pyruvate, yung PEP natin kanina, is yun na siya ang tagasubo ng phosphate na ito na nas attached to carbon 2 sa inyong ADP para maging ATP. Okay? So this is the last one here. The last part na, uh, uh, which is at stage 10. So, doon na siya nangyayari na ang phosphoenol pyruvate, ibibigay niya ang kanyang phosphate group kay ADP para maging pyruvate at makagawa ng ATP. The pyruvate class will enter your uh, pyruvate oxidation process. Okay? So, yun siya ang papasukan niya, the, yung pyruvate oxidation na process. So, the... Okay, wait lang because we have to open another one. Okay. So, we have here your, this one. Okay. So, kailan siya si ATP needed? Ito yung mga dapat ninyong tandaan which is ask in your summative test. Okay, so kailan si ATP needed in your glycolysis at steps 1 and 3. Okay, so after it, si energy is actually for, uh, created na in the form of ATP kasi nagagawa na siya sa inyong last na step, which is sa steps 7 and 10. Okay, so this is your, uh, yung sa kanina, yung uh, fro uh, phosphofructocaine kinase. Yung um, enzyme natin na ginagamit natin to convert ATP. Ito siya. Right? So, we have here, saan ang main input and output uh, ng, ano, ng glycolysis? Ang main na input ng glycolysis is glucose, which is a 6-carbon molecule. Ang main output niya is dalawang molecules of pyruvate, which is a 3-carbon molecule. Okay, so sa aerobic respiration of glucose, tandaan natin that it can produce meron itong 2 pyruvic acid or 2 pyruvate na molecules, dalawang NADH, dalawang hydrogen molecules, dalawang ATP. Tandaan ha? So yan ang kaya niyang i-produce. Ito naman ang, ang, ang kailangan para pumasok kay para pumasok sa loob ng inyong uh, glycolysis. Alright? So, tandaan ha, saan siya magre-require ng ATP at steps 1 and 3? Saan siya magpuproduce ng ATP at steps 7 and 10? Saan siya magpuproduce ng NADH at step 6? Okay? Tandaan ang mga points na iyan. Alright? So, once your ATP, uh, once your glycolysis is already done, si pyruvate naman plus is immediately oxidized to acetyl coenzyme A. Oxidation class can produce carbon dioxide and NADH. 
ang carbon dioxide, we um, pinapalabas natin siya, we breathe it out via our respiratory system. Ang NADH naman class is actually napupunta iyan kay electron transport chain to be harvested and converted into ATP. So, ito siyang ating um, nagiging product na enzyme which is acetyl coenzyme A. So, ang coenzyme A is meron siyang sulfhydryl na group. Okay, if you already reviewed your module 1, so meron tayo yung functional groups doon. Sulfhydryl is actually one of your functional groups common among um, living organisms. Ito yung parating natin ginagamit. Okay? So, meron yan sa uh, ano, coenzyme A kasi class is partially like a protein. Okay? So, meron tayong attachment here dito. Okay? So, dito si uh, sulfur here. Alright? So, Ma'am, ma anong daghan mag post ace dira sa amo ang module na 6? Okay, class. Unfortunately, enzymes are really needed para mas mabilis yung process ni glycolysis. Glycolysis kasi can produce energy at a very fast uh, pace. So, masyado siya mabilis. Okay, and it's actually helped by your enzymes. Enzymes are actually named according to this one. So, commonly, ito yung pagkakapangalan niya. Like, it has the substrate here. This is the suffix here, which is the ACE, which is common for them. So, we have the term, yung kanyang ano, product na name is actually lactase. Like, the lactose plus ACE is equal to lactase. Kung according to function naman, like the hexokinase, because it can transfer the phosphate from ATP to your sugar. So, hexokinase nasa first part iyan ng inyong ano, ng inyong glycolysis. So, meron kang hexose na sugar. Yung six, ano pa siya, yung uh, hexagon pa siya na form, okay, na sugar, plus a kinase na ano, na enzyme. So, maging hexokinase. Okay, you have also triose na phosphate isomerase. Triose my, means it's a three carbon sugar uh, na merong phosphate na group attached to it. And isomerase because it can um, perform isomerization, like it can transfer one phosphate to another group, okay, or it can transfer another um, hydrogen to another na, ano, na carbon molecule, uh, one uh, oxygen to another ox, uh, another carbon molecule. So attachment lang siya. Uh, parang it will transfer one uh, group or molecule or um, element from one part of that group to another part. Okay, so that's isomerization. Okay, another is we have your pyruvate kinase. So the transfer of your phosphate from ATP to pyruvate. Ito yung ginagamit natin sa last na um, part. Okay. So, we have here the kinase and isomerase. Ano yung meaning ng mga special enzymes na iyan? Kinase is a tran uh, transferase. So, it can transfer okay, uh, a phosphate group from ATP to a substance or vice versa. So, pwede siyang baliktad-baliktad. Like, ang phosphate ni ATP pwede niya i-transfer to create energy. Ang phosphate ni ng another na, na substance, a transfer ng another substrate will be transferred to ADP para maging ATP to create energy. Okay, we have also isomerase. Yung isomerase natin, like, mag-transfer, transfer lang, like, one phosphate, it transfer kay carb from carbon 3 to carbon 2, ganun. That's, uh, it will use an isomerase. Ganun ang pag uh, secreto para ma-memorize mo ang enzymes for glycolysis and you will need that not here in high school but in college okay kailangan niyo yan because you will need to memorize it doon na okay so we have another enzyme here which is dehydrogenase dehydrogenase class when you say de pagtanggal from the term meron kayong hydrogen diyan pagtanggal ng hydrogen so here is the process which will create uh, redox reaction. Okay? So, meron tayong redox reaction na mangyayari kapag magsabi ka ng dehydrogenase. Okay? Next one is you have a mutase. Mutase is actually an isomerase. 
mutase is ang position ng one functional group. Kung si isomerase kasi class, it's actually just um, one transfer to another. Si mutase naman is another transfer pero positional na type. Okay, so the same pa rin siya kay isomerase pero si isomerase kasi may itwik siya na something. Si mutase is i-transfer niya talaga from one to another lang. Yun lang, parang konti lang siya. Konti na sila both but it will change the structure. Kaya makakreate sila ng structural isomers na pra sa ganito. Okay? Makakreate sila ng iba na naman na molecule pero magkapareho lang sila ng number of elements. Okay? Kahit i- plus mo uh, i-add mo pa yan ano ang both ng mga molecules by side by side it's still the same but nagkaiba lang sila ng position ng mga functional groups another is we have your hydrolase ang hydrolase is actually the one that will cause your hydrolysis reaction in your module 1 hydrolysis is actually required uh, requires ox, um, water okay so kailangan ng ano ng water it's the splitting of water ang hydrolysis na reaction. Okay? So, ito yung mga ano, mga mga enzymes ginagamit natin sa ating glycolysis. And it's in your module 6 sa inyong table for glycolysis. So, we have the first one which is the hexokinase, then the next one is phosphoglucose isomerase. In step 3, you have your phosphofructokinase or kinase, you have next is step four, fru uh, fructose bisphosphate aldolase. Then for step five, you have triose phosphate isomerase. Step six, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, uh, which is your G3PD. Okay. Uh, meron tayo yung G6PD na disorder. Okay. It's actually quite related to this one. Okay. Next is we have your step seven phosphoglycerate kinase then step 8 it will be using phosphoglycerate mutase then step 9 enolase and step 10 you have your pyruvate kinase okay so yun ang mga ano the reactions are actually required these enzymes are actually required to create these reactions ito siya these reactions para mas madali magawa ang ATP and ADH and your byproduct na um, water from your glycolysis, from one glucose molecule. Okay? So, um, napapansin ninyo, ang iba is actually just mag-transfer, transfer lang. But actually, the transferring of your functional groups are actually beneficial para maka, mas maka-harvest pa ng maraming energy. Okay? So, yun ang uses ng inyo mga enzymes. Okay? You don't need a lot of it. Uh, you don't need to memorize it, but you just need to familiarize unsay gamit sa bawat isa na enzyme. Anong gamit pala nila? Anong purpose ng bawat isa? Okay? Bakit may mga enzymes tayong gagamitin? Yun ang kailangan yung intindihin from your glycolysis. And this is your table for uh, understanding that one. Another is you have your, um, this one, you have a short quiz here. So, pwede nyo siyang i-take ang quiz para makasagot kayo. And you can actually create a, a group chat na room, okay, para mag-share kayo ng ideas for this one. And you can form your own. Uh, remember yung pina-ano ko ninyo, pina-activity ko sa inyo yung sa module 1, like I asked you to create your own groups. Okay, these groups are actually very beneficial for this one. Kailangan nyo yun because you have to, uh, to understand this na mga re lessons na ito. Okay, the next lessons that we will be having is, okay, sorry. All right. So, the next lesson that you will have is meron tayo yung inyong, So, meron kayo yung inyong dito. Alright. So, kailangan ninyo ma-memorize. Ma-memorize pala. Sorry, hindi memorize. So, ito yung ilalason natin next, which is here. Uh, the Krebs cycle. 
then the electron transport chain and your anaerobic uh, fermentation. Ito siya, 20, 21, 22. Those are our lessons for quarter two. Last natin na ilalason by next week. Okay, the first part of aerobic respiration tayo lang muna ngayon dahil sa hindi natin kaya ubusin sa sobrang haba at mababagot din kayo at magdugo na ganin yung ilong sa glycolysis pa lang. Okay, so hinahinayan na nato class ha? So step by step muna tayo. Hanggang glycolysis muna tayo ngayon, then you will have Krebs and electron transport chain, then uh, anaerobic respiration. Mabilis na ito siya, itong dalawa, kapag naintindihan nyo na ito, this one. You will need a separate na lecture for Krebs cycle because it's quite difficult to understand. Medyo mahirap siya because sa Krebs kasi class, you will have a lot to take in. Just like glycolysis. So, medyo kailangan siya ng different na lesson. And including your electron transport chain. Madali lang actually sila lahat. Yung ano lang, understanding lang kung bakit ganun ang mangyayari sa kanila. Yun lang kailangan yung intindihin. Because this is just high school biology. Sa college kasi, you will have to take in every step. Bawat transfer. Ganun. Tuki-tuki una na ninyo tanan. But here in... High school, overview ang ating uh, main na is a study. More on overview. Ano yung nangyayari sa kanila? Ano yung nagiging produkto nila? Ano yung i-produce uh, na mga products nila? Paano siya nagiging beneficial sa bawat isa sa mga molecules na iyan? Okay, so yun ang ating i uh, gagawin for high school biology. All right. So, uh, if you're still not done with your summative test, kindly uh, answer the Google form. Um, I'll check it out later if it's still open. Okay, if it isn't open, then I'll reopen it again para makasagot kayong lahat. Okay, sa mga late or hindi pa nagpasa, please do so answer the Google form na. Hindi na kayo papasa ng papel sa Google form na kayo sasagot. Always yan ha sa mga late na hindi sumasagot. And kapag late kayo sa pag-submit, this quarter, I won't be calling you na. Uh, unlike yung sa uh, quarter one that I actually uh, contacted every one of you. Kayo na yung mag um, mag <laughs> Magano ng inyong mga sarili, mag-monitor ng inyong sarili. Madali lang naman kasi class tandaan kung alin lang ang sasagutan. Ang sasagutan lang actually for quarter 2 na ipapasa lang talaga sa akin ha is module 3 and module 5. My graphing activity ang module 5. Okay, I'll be showing you ano yung laman ng ating module 5. Okay. Wait lang. Alright, we have your module 5, which is, I'll show it to you. So you can, ano, saan banda yung sasagutan? Wait. Okay. Alright, so this is the one that you will be answering. Ito siya. So it's on module 5 here. Ito. This is your performance activity. Alright? So, you will be using mga, ano sa inyong mga hinay-hay? Mga kimpit sa inyong hinay-hay. So, that's clothes spins. So, you will be um, performing that one. Please perform it by your own. So, you can perform, get the your own data. Kasi, hindi siya nagmamatter sa o asa ang pinakatama na data. It actually matters kung na-perform mo, naintindihan mo, yung entire na process at para saan yung activity na yan. Discover it on your own. Madali lang naman sagutan yung entire na questions. There are only uh, these questions here. B, C, D, E, F, G. Madali lang yan siya sagutan. Actually, class, mas mahirap ang graph. Bakit? Ang common sa inyo is nagkakamali kayo dito sa pag-name. Kailangan may name ito dito at mag-start dito sa zero na point na ito. Ito dito sa last na part. And dapat siya 
my X and Y na coordinates, meron kang pangalan dito sa baba. Usually, it's the number of times of tries uh, and the number of uh, uh, oras na like the seconds na kaya, ni, kaya mong gawin yung activity. So, hindi talaga kayo magkapareho ng values dyan. Okay? So, madali lang masakpan ang mga nagkopyahan na hindi part. Okay? So, madali lang kasi makita dyan plus ha. So, you have 20 second, meron kayong 9 na 20 second period. So, meron kayong 9 trials. So, you have 9 trials ha. So, you have each trial here. You have times here. Okay. So, uh, kayo nang bahala magpano maglagay. Or you have here your trials here and you have your time here. Okay. You have 20 seconds here. You have your trials here. Pwede yan siya dyan ang pagkakaano. Basta as long as you have named it. And meron kang pangalan sa iyong figure. And meron kang graph dito. Alright? So, that's the one that you will have to perform. So, that's part of your lesson for module 5. Okay, in module 6 naman, sa module 6, doon ninyo makikita yung diniscuss natin kanina. Okay, in your module 6, you have here this one. Ito siya your glycolysis, energy investment phase, energy releasing or payoff phase. Then you have the, itong ilalasa natin by next week, uh, yung in yung Krebs cycle. Ito siya. Okay, so you'll be learning this one, ang Krebs cycle by next week. So the last na module na ipapadala namin by January 17, 2022, so, happy New Year pala everyone. Nakalimutan ko mag-greet sa inyo kanina. Okay, this one is your module 7. So, this is about electron transport chain and your, which is oxidative for, for phosphorylation and your fermentation. So, meron kayo yung, ito siya, yung fermentation ninyo, which is meron kayong lactic acid and you have also your, um, acetic acid na um, ethanol na fermentation pala. Okay, so that's your um, lesson for module 7. Okay, may sinabi ako last time na may gagawin for module 7 pero dahil sa na-realize ko na ang dami, pala ninyo, dami ko palang hindi na-discuss sa inyo pa so I will have a lesson on uh, this one. So, another na naman by next week. Sa mga mag-face to face, we will have a one-by-one -one lesson on this one. Ito siya. Dito sa fermentation and this one. Sa, um, for, ito siya. Dito sa ating electron transport chain. Ito, this one. Okay? I-discuss natin to one-by-one. Alright? So, you will have also... Uh, a copy of your videos, which is sa ating ano, this, sorry, I've already updated kasi the, this one. So, this is your folder para sa ating uh, mga lessons for quarter two for biology. So, in biology, meron tayong ito. Okay, wait lang. Okay, so meron tayong sa bio, bio one. So, this is the last one. So, meron tayong seven modules. Ang sa may sasagutan lang is module three. Okay? So, in module three kasi ito lang, uh, meron kayong sasagutan. Then, you have in module five. Dalawa lang ang isasubmit sa akin. Isa is a lab report. Another is a graph report. Okay? So, may dalawa lang. Three and five. Yan lang ang may isasubmit for biology. Konti lang class ha. Pero, okay, which is, this is a copy of your modules sa mga nadidistribute na modules, which is hindi ko pa na-update. Yan ang hindi ko pa talaga na-update. Okay, and you have also here lesson videos, videos that you can actually, under to understand these lessons natin, which is included, ito siya. And this one, electron transport chain, which is mas may... Uh, Naka, nagkakalituhan ng lahat. So, dito siya ninyo kailangan i sa study. So, meron din kay about ATP. Paano siya nagagawa? Okay. 
Another thing is you have your lesson na PowerPoints. So, ang PowerPoints natin for this na uh, quarter two is meron kayong ito, which is this one, mga PowerPoints, and we have Harper's. This is a biochemistry. Para sa mga magmedicine, this is an advanced textbook para sa inyo. Okay? So, lahat na ito ng mga magmemedicine or mag-agriculture or veterinary or agricultural biosystems kasi may chemistry ang, ang ABE na engineering. Okay? So, this is an advanced na textbook na sa inyo na copy. Okay? That's your copies na. Advanced na copy. And for quarter, sorry, let's go back. I'll show you your quarter uh, two pala because I have to let you know marami kayong activities for quarter three. Kaya kung pwede, tapusin na ninyo ang inyong quarter two kagad-agad kasi bawat module sa quarter three ay may sasagutan for this uh, for this lesson, uh, for this quarter pala. Halos lahat ng modules merong sasagutan. Right? So you have to get ready for that. So for quarter two, dahil sa medyo mabigat siya, you only need to submit uh, modules one and three for quarter uh, two natin na modules. Uh, you have three, eh, module three and five pala, sorry. Module three and five. All right. If you have questions, meron pa bang sa ano, tanong regarding sa ating mga lessons? Hello? Baka natulog na kayong lahat. Oo. May, may ano pa ba? Questions regarding sa ating lesson? Okay. So, if you don't have any question ngayon, at my question kayo later, you can send uh, send me a personal message uh, via messenger or you can text me yung cellphone number na binibigay ko sa group chat natin. Okay? So, just contact me if you have questions. And for others, yung mga digital natin na mga students, please um, send your email to the prescribed na email na sinesend ko. Okay, just click the ano, kasi ma-click man yan siya because it's hyperlinked automatically. So you have to click it, then saka kayo mag-attach ng files ninyo. And please make sure yung in-attach ninyo na files are really clear kasi I will uh, message you again if it's not clear. Got it? Okay, so kung walang question, talaga bang walang magtatanong? Okay. So, I'll be uh, sending this one. I'll be uploading the, a copy of this one mamaya kasi matagal pa to siya mag-processing kay YouTube. So, I'll be sending you a copy of this one, ang link nito sa YouTube mamaya. Alright? So, I'll say goodbye kasi I will be checking your modules dito and I will be sorting the modules then for distribution on January 17. All right? So I will be having classes by this week sa so face-to-face classes starting this afternoon. Uh, yung mga students pala na hindi ko maklasehan, like the morning session na first ano, yun siya ang kailangan ko kasi i-save pa <laughs> kasi hindi pa sila nakahawak ng microscope. Okay, so... Uh, I'll be seeing every one of you, yung mga nag dito na for face-to-face -face classes. I'll be seeing each one of you by this week and next week. Alright? So, I'll say goodbye muna. So, para maka-ano tayo, maka-focus maka kayo on your other modules. So, goodbye class and I'll see you again next week. Okay? So, ang lesson natin next week ha? ano yung lesson natin? We have your Krebs cycle, your electron transport chain, then you have your um, fermentation processes. Okay? So, anaerobic respiration. So, part of the ano, continuation of our um, aerobic, then they until your anaerobic na respiration processes. Alright? 
So, goodbye class and I'll see you again next week. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Bye po, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Ma